Okay, hello gamers. Today, we're not doing Apex. I want to talk about Railjack Revisited and Warframe. Today, I wanted to give you some ideas for how to build your Railjack with all the equipment that goes into it, how to build your Plexus, which is the way you mod your Railjack, and which Warframes to use, which weapons to use. We're going to go through all of that step by step. Timestamps are in the description. So, we'll get started with the Railjack itself. You have shields, engines, plating, reactor. Starting off with, with shields, I don't think it matters very much at all which set of shields you use. Um, if you are a competent Railjack player uh, and a competent Railjack pilot, I probably should say over above all else, the amount of shields that you have really just doesn't matter. It's not very often that enemies are going to be stripping your shields and killing you with straight up gunfire. It's only going to be like, you know, the, 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 the breaching parties or... The Grenier missile platforms that just continuously shoot forever that are going to be annoying to you, but a little more shield capacity is not going to help you with that stuff. So I think all you care about for shields is the little bonus rider uh, extra ability that is the very the very last line. So for this one, for this shield array, railjack damage increased 25% when shields are depleted. And this is like the lowest shield capacity shield array, so it kind of makes sense that, you know, you... you, you might want to not even valence fusion this thing up and have the lowest possible shield capacity that way you're more likely to have the damage boost from it um so that is definitely something you could go for uh one of the levon ones is to give you um a thousand percent of energy consumed using your battle mods converted into shields so let's say you, you used a super ability from your railjack that cost you 200 energy to use when you cast that you should immediately get 2000 shields back onto your railjack so if you find that any sort of survivability uh, is a problem, going for a Levon Shield Array with this particular rider on it, I think is probably very, very smart. Um, not really to my taste, but if that's what you want, then by all means, go for it. Next up, we have the Vidar Shield Arrays. These are just kind of middle, uh, middle of the road. They're okay. The bonus on this one that I have, 30% shield regen per second. Uh, no, wait, no, that's the wrong line. Redirect 50 energy to shields with every kill. I mean, you're, you're going to kill, like, in in Grenier skirmish missions, which has the highest spawn rate of fighters, you might kill a group of, like, 15 to 20 fighters. So that's, that's not that much in the way of energy when you could just get all of that instantly from the Levon shield generator. Uh, but there are other Vidar bonuses. You know, like, this one will... Um, Take 30% of damage on your shields and convert it into extra base damage for your gun, uh, which I think is kind of interesting. It's kind of like that old mod uh, for the melee system. What is it called? God, I don't even remember. It's not like, it's not focus energy. Oh man, this was a mod that was used back in like 2014. Oh, uh, if someone remembers the name of that mod, please tell me what I'm thinking of. There is like a melee mod that it, it stores the energy on your abilities and you can then basically just get it for one melee hit as base damage or something it's kind of kind of interesting but otherwise not very good um this one is kind of interesting for the vidar so this one can give you uh shields apply an electrical proc on enemies within 50 meters every 10 seconds if this said 500 meters it might be okay but a 50 meter uh, guaranteed electricity proc is just not good when we're talking about a game mode that is on the scale of like thousands and thousands of meters, you have to actually be parked on top of an enemy to get them to take this electrical proc. So yeah, not very good. All in all, I think like some of the better ones that I've seen, and I don't have more to show you because they were so bad. I just threw them out instantly as soon as getting them. These were the only ones that were even somewhat like interesting. I would really recommend if you have survivability issues, go for the Levon shield generator with this, um, with this particular buff on it that gives you a thousand percent of energy converted into shields. Otherwise, Zet Key just giving you more damage in your guns is completely reasonable to go for. Engines literally does not matter. This is to your taste 100% and how fast you want to go. Um, personally, I use Vidar, which has the worst boost speed, which is not really to my taste that much. Um, but I haven't seen any other engines that like if I get to like a 2.0 or 2.1 boost speed, I just don't really feel the difference all too much uh, when I'm boosting around, especially with the mod loadout I have, which we'll talk about later. I, I just don't 
feel like I feel that bonus much. So I go for this one because I get 10% armor strip on any uh, intruders in the railjack. So if I'm playing solo, which I often do, um, my crewmates will have a worse version of corrosive projection on them is basically what this does is like, I'll just consider, consider it saying instead of it strips 10% armor, say that your crewmates, your, your AI crewmates have corrosive projection. Like that's okay. You know, it's not the most amazing thing in the world, but it helps kind of maybe hopefully. So I just go for that, uh, for plating. In my opinion, you you kind of don't want Zet key plating, which is what I have right here. I think I I don't know which house uh, is the one that you do want, but you want the one that has the most hull strength and the least armor. Reason being is that with the way uh, uh, that Warframe's math works, when you get your armor to be like three thousand or greater, it really 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 does not matter how much armor you have at that point. The diminishing returns well diminish so much that. Armor values that high just don't matter. So having more HP and less armor makes sense in the context of um, of Railjack. So you don't want Zetki, but it's all I have, so it's what I use. For the reactor, you do want Zetki. There, to my in my opinion, there is literally no reason to use either a Levon Sigma or Void. I'm not the Void Vidar reactor. You only want Zetki. Reason being more battle mod range, and more battle mod strength. So this will make your railjack abilities stronger and hit from a farther distance, which is the main things that you want to clear railjack missions quickly. You do not care about battle mod duration at all. Even without duration bonuses, things that last a long time, like tether, like void hole, have so much of a duration at base that giving them 60% more is foolish. It just does not actually help you in any meaningful way. There is no point in having that. Plus, you're losing out on 20% strength. With Vidar reactors, you get 40% duration, which you still don't care about, but you get 60% range. So that's better than the 40% range on here, but you don't get any strength. So th there, there is only one choice, and it is Zetki, in my opinion. I, I hate to boil the game down to being that simple, um, but I, I, just, I can't honestly think of a situation that you would ever find yourself in where you would want a Levon or you would want a Vidar Reactor. Now, maybe down the road, as they release more abilities for us, they release just more and more things into the Railjack ecosystem, perhaps Levon or Vidar Reactors might make sense. But as of today, March 21st, 2021, Zetki Reactor is the only reactor in the game that matters. Moving into armaments, we have a lot of free choice and free will here, uh, and you can select mostly anything you want and it will be okay. Um, I'm just gonna give you some of my personal favorites and stuff that I think performs very well, uh, and then you can just kind of go from there. Glazio, the Zetki Glazio is the one that I have. I don't have any of the other variants to know what they do yet, unfortunately, uh, but for the Glazio, it's just, just fundamentally a very good balance of range, projectile speed, damage, fire rates, crit stats. It's just a very well-balanced weapon that will do everything very, very well. It feels good to shoot. It sounds cool. does good damage. Interacts very nicely with crit mods. Just, I, I think this is a, a kind of a gold standard for Railjack weapons right now. And I'm feeling this way with the Zetki Glazio that I don't even have fully valence fusioned yet because I've only found one Zetki Glazio period. So like I'm going to have to look, go, go look at the drop tables and see where this drops to go farm up some more of these things. But this is, in my opinion, one of the strongest Railjack weapons right now. It just feels very, very good. There's another new one in the Levon Talon. This is a rapid fire laser cannon. I, I don't like this weapon very much. It, it feels really good to use just like it, it, it's a it's a really rapid firing hit scan weapon but the damage is kind of terrible and the version that i have has bonus fire rate on an already very fast firing weapon so i just you know it's just a it's just a really bad modifier i'm kind of curious if i were to get like a a, a zet key talon or or something like that if it might have uh some really favorable damage stat on it or something else really really useful um, the Talon may actually be very, very good, but at least this version of it, I, I really cannot recommend. Uh, the Lathe 
I think is actually a very solid weapon. Um, reason being is that this is kind of like a shotgun for your railjack. And in the Corpus mission specifically, with the um, the Corpus cruise ships having this um, this invulnerable shield that orbits around them, you're going to need to get your railjack point blank against these uh, cruise ships to get behind that rotating shield and shoot out the drone that's floating in front of the cruise ship that is creating the shield. So, you know, if you're going to be that that point blank and that close range with your opponents, you might as well use the shotgun weapon, right? And it does pretty, pretty solid damage. Um, it's very, very comparable to the Glazio uh, when you are in the, um, the effective range of this weapon. But I still think the Glazio is just going to be a more overall good pick. But Lathe is definitely an option. If you, if you have fun with it and you enjoy it, then by all means, go for it. Zetki Fotor and Pulsar, I think, are both very strong still. I think they were very strong in previous versions of Railjack, and they remain quite strong. Uh, specifically, the Zetki Fodor for extra heat damage, um, and the Zetki Pulsar for fire rate. Um, these these weapons benefit from these specific um, little rider perks very, very nicely. And in the Railjack Revisited metagame, I think they still fit very, very well. The Zetki Vort on paper looks like it should be really good. In practice, I think this gun sucks a lot. This this weapon, both versus Grenier and Corpus, feels like it does nowhere near enough damage uh, when compared to either the Lathe or the Glazio. And I really cannot recommend using the Vort. It, it's just a weapon that looks cool, it sounds cool, it feels like, just looking at the stats, like it just seems like it should be decent, but in practice, it, it really sucks. Um, the Carcinox, I do not recommend. I don't think this is a very powerful weapon. I think you have way better options that are going to be way more consistent for you. Cryptophon is a, a literal cannon. This thing hurts a lot. It does a billion damage, basically. And I have it on my side guns. Really solid, but, of course, very short range. So, use, use, use with caution. The Von Lath, solid. Fotor, again, solid. Where's there, is there any other weapons that we haven't talked about yet? Just going through my own little list here. No, that's, I mean, at least of my inventory, that's all we've really got. Um, if there's any Railjack weapons I'm missing from my inventory, it's probably something that I've already used and I've decided I don't really find it to be very good and I've thrown it out. So all the stuff that's in my inventory, stuff that's even like remotely decent and anything that's not in there is just not really useful. Um, moving on to the Missile Launcher. I kind of think Tycho Seeker Mark III is like your only option. I think that it is just so damn good. There is no reason to use anything else besides it. Um, if you don't have that, you don't know how to get it, you go to this left uh, research station over here. And uh, this is where you can research these, um, a lot of like baseline versions of many of the weapons in the game. So you'll scroll all the way down to Tycho Seeker. You'll have to make Tycho Seeker Mark 1. Once that's completed, you can research Mark 2, then you can research Mark 3. You 100 million percent want to research all the way up to Tycho Seeker Mark 3. This is just the gold standard. Uh, nothing else really comes close. The Melati is kind of fun in that it's like a swarm of dumb fire rockets. It's, it's, it's a fun weapon to use, but this does not help you strip shields off of cruise ships from long range to actually, uh, you know, use your artillery on them, which is kind of the whole reason you ever use the missile launcher is to clear shields for artillery. Slow. I just cannot recommend the Milani for really anything whatsoever. The uh, Galvark is like, okay, I guess, in that it's, it's pretty cool at helping you kill off fighters, like groups of fighters. But again, you don't want to be using your, your ordnance or your missile launcher to attack fighters. You want it to help you very easily and cleanly and effortlessly break shield generators on cruise ships, both Grenier and Corpus. So I just, I cannot recommend the Galvark either. I, I think your only option for missile launchers right now is the Tycho Seeker um, until they introduce some other enemy types or, you know, some more wrinkles to the Railjack metagame to, to make those other options actually matter. But for now, Tycho Seeker, only choice. Make sure you research that and equip that. Moving into mods or uh, onto your Plexus. This is where we have quite a lot to talk about, and I will do my best to get through it 
uh, as quickly as I reasonably can. We will start not with the aura. We'll finish with the aura. We'll start with just your baseline mods that I think you always want to have no matter what. First up is Artillery Cheap Shot, which uh, hmm, it's covered by my camera. Let me just move that really quick. There we go. So Artillery Cheap Shot, 60% uh, chance to not consume dome charges. So basically the reason I have this equipped is because we do not play Warframe with perfect teammates or even competent teammates a lot of the times. So having someone who is actually going to be crafting dome charges for your ship and performing the engineering role is effectively zero. So because of that, you really want to have artillery cheap shot equipped so that way you can make the most with your two starting shots that you possibly can before you go and try to forge more dome charges. So it's really as simple as that. This is just protection against the average Warframe player, which honestly is not very competent, sadly. Moving on from that, Hyper Strike. Ever since they rebalanced the way that all the uh, Railjack abilities work and they, they have put a lot more reliance on the different guns um, on the forefront, like you, you have to actually use your guns now and actually care about them. Hyper Strike is a must. Even with 75% turret damage, your turrets still just barely even touch high level fighters. Like it, it, it is a fool's errand to try to clear out fighters with your um, with your 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 railjack turrets and and like high level uh, veil proxima corpus missions specifically. Hyper Strike is a must use, but even then, it's just the 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 number on it is so low that. It's just not quite enough. We, like, we, we need a primed Hyper Strike is what we need to get this thing to rank 10 so your guns will actually do some damage. Because, like, right now, uh, they, they, they're, even the really strong ones are not strong enough, to be, to be totally honest. Which is why we also have this brand new mod, Crimson Fugue, on here. So you get even more turret damage stacking up per enemy destroyed for 8 seconds. So basically what you do is, we'll switch over to Tactical really quickly. You, you, you pop the battle stations... Tactical ability to give yourself 65% base damage alongside your other your 75% here. So that's 140% damage. That's basically serration. I got a primary weapon. That's that's that's, that's like a one off the top serration. So okay, that is an acceptable amount of damage. So you start you start killing people with that, and that'll start proccing crimson fugue. And then you you basically as as you um you run out of your 26 second duration of battle stations. Crimson Fugue will come in and start being, um, you know, being your your secondary increase of base damage that will keep your your um, your guns at the maximum possible strength. I kind of hate that, you know. This is all about chaining the kills to keep your damage up, and then if you stop killing stuff for a few seconds because you have to put out a fire or you have to clear a boarding party or this or that, you just lose all your damage and your railjack has stopped snowballing. Um, it's really tough to keep the, the snowball effect going, uh, with this mod, but I still think that it is a must include and you should really go out of your way to farm this. I don't know quite how rare it actually is. I believe I've only got maybe one. Let me look through. Yeah, I don't see any others in my inventory. So might, it might actually be a fairly rare mod. Strongly recommend you go onto the wiki and look it up and get it and rank it up at least to rank eight if you can afford it. Next up for must includes Warhead. You do not need to max this out as long as you have a rank 3 Tycho Seeker. Um, getting this thing to rank 8 or even rank 7 will cause your um, Tycho Seeker missile to do exactly enough damage to break all three shield generators on either of the uh, Corpus or Grenier crew ships um, in one missile. So you don't need to shoot two missiles or shoot a missile and then kind of plink off the, the, the shield generators. You can just shoot one missile break all three shield generators in one explosion and then immediately um, get onto your ordnance and blow up the, uh, or not your ordnance, get onto the, the forward artillery and blow up your cruise ships. So you, you do not need to max this, but this is a must include. This is non-negotiable. You must have this or else Railjack will take you a very long time and just not be very fun and not be very efficient to farm. So again, I, I hate to talk about the game and simplify it in such a way to say that you, you must use a must use mod and but come on, 
it, it really is like you know that that's just this is just kind of the truth of anything in warframe like you you need your base damage and you need like the couple of other things that are like baseline like which is usually like crit chance crit damage viral base damage and like attack speed are kind of like the five big things that you need to always be modding for and it's no exception with railjack so keep all that in mind um for everything else that is not quite as needed i use section density for crit damage you could swap this out for crit chance if you wanted or you could run both crit chance and crit damage that would definitely help with uh, some of the turret problems and turret damage stuff that i'm complaining about but this is kind of the end of stuff uh, the end of where i have room to be uh including damage and i need to include some other stuff just for quality of life purposes so rip load is one of those quality of life things this makes it so your ordnance, which is your your missile launcher, uh, will reload 42% faster. Even then, it still reloads very, very slowly. But if you're going to be doing specifically Grenier skirmish missions, where one of the objectives is always to kill six enemy Grenier cruise ships, this is a must bring because you need to shoot six missiles, and it takes you a damn long time to do it already. Uh, if you don't have this mod on, it just it's it is a waste of your time to not have this mod because the reload is so incredibly slow this is unfortunately a must include mod um for grenier missions where you're killing six cruise ships now that being said if you're if you're playing corpus missions usually the maximum number of cruise ships you have to kill is three and it's going to take you a long time to kill each individual cru individual cruise ship anyways because you're you're busy doing like 360 spins around them trying to chase that stupid shield drone to kill the shield drone so you can then actually artillery the thing to death. So you can get away with not having rip load and instead have crit chance and crit damage, um, which actually is kind of ideal for corpus missions because there's just so few um, cruise ships to kill. And the fighters on those missions are going to be 10 to 20 levels higher than Grenier fighters. So more crit chance and crit damage is kind of necessary to help you actually muscle through uh, those monstrous fighters that the Corpus bring out. They're, they're, they're just so hardy, even against like the best, the best weapons. So yeah, rip load for crit chance uh, or crit damage is absolutely reasonable for Corpus. But for Grenier, you, you really want rip load. Other stuff, Ion Burn, Cruising Speed. These are just to make me happy with my Railjack and actually enjoy flying it because otherwise it is so damn slow that I just like don't even want to play a Railjack. So these make me actually move quickly and enjoy my time with the game mode. So these are non-negotiable, non-removable for me personally. Finally, we'll get into your aura um, called Matrix or Matrices for the Railjack. These are... There's not many of them. There's a couple that are good and a couple that are doo-doo and you don't want to use. Um, right now, I'm using the Orgon Tuning Matrix for turret heat capacity. So basically, it lets me shoot the gun for about 20% longer before I need to wait for it to cool down. Um, and that's going to represent quite a fair bit of damage for me in the long run. Elemental Resistance, literally don't care. Forge Cooldown, Forge Capacity also, literally do not care. These things are not helpful at all in my opinion indomitable matrix shield regen during breach does not matter literally a useless bon bonus 30 percent armor when below 36 percent hull literally useless because your armor values are so absurdly high as it is having 30 percent more is n not a useful trait this should just be you have 30 percent more hull or something like or if your hull is like below a certain amount, then it will like heal quickly up to a set amount. Kind of like that um, that one Necromech mod, like Necromech, not Vigor, what I don't even know. You know the mod I'm talking about for Necromechs, where if you get like below a certain level of health, then your Necromech will heal itself up to like 20% or something. If this said that, that would be okay. But realistically, the only reason you would ever run Indomitable Matrix is because of the top uh, line where it says minus 12% breach chance. So that means you have a 12% chance of your ship not getting breached, which thus will waste time and revelite uh, from you as the player, and it's just a not fun mechanic to deal with. So a 12% chance to not deal with that mechanic is, like, okay, I guess. Um, is it really good enough to be competitive with your turrets sucking less? I don't know. But uh, it's certainly there as an option should you elect to use it. 
The only one that I think is actually reasonably valuable, uh, apart from the Orgon Tuning Matrix, is the Onslaught Matrix. This gives you 15% more base damage when you're at 100% hull. So that means if you have Hyper Strike on your ship, plus Battle Stations active, plus the uh, Onslaught Matrix, now, at the start of a mission, before you've taken damage, you have Serration on your Railjack. Congratulations, you have... With three mods, done what mod, one, one mod would do on a primary weapon, which is already the weakest kind of weapon in Warframe. So, that's not great, but it's something. Reflecting 25% of damage you receive while you're over 80% shields. I mean, so you're going to reflect 25% of one hit on your Railjack 20% of the time. That you're reflecting no damage 0% of the time. This might as well say 0% chance to reflect 0% damage because this is completely useless. That is, You're never going to feel that. You're never going to notice that. This is never going to help you kill something faster. This is a rider that they took development time to code in that doesn't do anything. And I don't know why it exists. Finally, 6% battle mod efficiency so your seeker volley that would normally cost 200 will now cost 188 energy do you really care about that i don't think so i don't think you do so realistically you have two auras that matter orgon tuning matrix for turret heat capacity which i think actually does does have an appreciable benefit that you can actually feel or onslaught matrix for base turret damage which is an also reasonable thing for you to build for ironclad matrix gives you hull armor max shields shield regen all the health understandable if you choose to use it i don't think it's any good I don't think that your Railjack is going to be dying enough for you to give a shit about this, to be completely patently honest. So, I would just go ahead and not, personally. Same thing for Raider Matrix. Um, so this thing gives you extra Arcwing speed, damage, shield, and armor. There is currently no content in Railjack that requires you to use your, your Arcwing unless you are flying a very short distance from point A to point B. Arcwing speed is thus useful, but you have the, um, the Warframe catapult or whatever it's called on your, um, on your Railjack to launch you like seven to 8,000 meters towards whatever it is you want to get to at breakneck speeds. And then you just blink a couple times with your Itzel and you are where you need to go. So until we get to a point in the game where DE includes content that forces you and or multiple people to be in your arc wings for an extended period of time, this Railjack aura is not a useful aura for you to use. And I do not recommend it. I'm not going to dumpster this one as hard as some of the others because there could be future content in which this is actually useful. But as it currently stands this content that this would be good for does not exist. So the, the usefulness of this mod right now is zero, but could spike in the future. Next up, we have battle mods. We'll look at defensive mods first. Our choices are Blackout Pulse, which will deal an acceptable amount of damage in a very large AoE, while also stunning enemies. We have Countermeasures, which basically should just say do nothing for five energy to be completely honest or we have munitions vortex which at one point in time was very very powerful and may still be very very powerful when you combine specifically with void hole this is a combination that you could use to some success both munitions vortex and void hole however i don't recommend that you use void hole in this version of the game, simply because with Void Hull, you can suck enemy cruise ships into the Void Hull, and while they are in the Void Hull, they don't hold still. They they do this inside the Void Hull. They shake a lot. And you cannot 
consistently shoot the engines for a one-shot kill with your forward artillery um, while a cruise ship is in the void hole. And for that specific reason, I would recommend you do not use void hole. No matter how good it otherwise might be, it makes the cruise ship killing experience so poor that it's it's kind of a detriment to the team, in my opinion. So I'd recommend that you do not use that. Instead, I like to use Seeker Volley combined with Tether. Tether will hold enemies in place just like Void Hole will, but it will not cause them to shake madly. And this will also cause them to be 80% more vulnerable to damage. When you destroy an enemy that is tethered, it will explode much like a Nova Molecular Prime. So you're going to get a popcorn damage effect where you're going to kill one enemy and then you're going to weaken everything else and you're going to kill a second enemy and it's going to explode and kill three, four, and five and then three, four, and five dying are going to have the chain reaction explosions and after you kill a couple of enemies in a tether, everything in the tether dies. So having just a, a, a crap ton of damage to throw at your tether makes a whole lot of sense. And Blackout Pulse is, in addition, a pretty acceptable amount of damage to throw into your tether. Plus, even outside of tethers, you can use this to help you against Corpus um, cruise ships in particular to help stun them and get around them more consistently so you can actually damage their invincibility drone. So I feel like this combination of abilities currently is very, very powerful. Now that said, let's look at our other offensive options. Shatterburst and Particle Ram. Shatterburst is one that I have not used too, too much in the current metagame, but looking at just the raw damage values on it, I think it could be very, very reasonably strong. I think I would rather still have Tether, but if you wanted to do something like Void Hole and Shatterburst, and perhaps even also Munitions Vortex, I think you could have a very nice little uh, chain reaction damage system going there, similar to Tether, Seeker, Volley, Blackout, Pulse. I think those are like, those are kind of like the, like the two sets. Either you do Blackout, Tether, Seeker, or you could do, uh, Shatterburst and, uh, Muni Vortex and Void Hole. You, you could, I think, do, do these three combined and have some success, but yet again, this relies on you using Void Hole which makes the forward artillery experience really, really bad for the rest of the team. So, however good it may or may not be, I still just kind of don't necessarily recommend you use it. Um, and instead, just go for uh, go for this. As for your super, um, Phoenix Blaze gives you just a lot of stuff. And I have not, honestly, I have not used Phoenix Blaze yet. I, mean, I didn't realize until just now what um, what it actually all does. I feel like this ability was like reworked or something um, with the um, with the new uh, Railjack revised update. It just feels like it does so much more stuff. It gives you, um, this is not the best UI thing for it. Extra damage, 60, is it 60% damage? Oh God, I don't even... Should I just, I don't want to just apply this here, but uh, we'll go ahead and just look at it. Ask me later. We'll go ahead and look at it in its, in its unfused state. I'm sorry for not having this prepared beforehand, guys I and girls. I thought that um, I kind of forgot this existed, to be completely, completely honest. So this thing will give um, Railjack turrets extra heat damage, which is really, really, really good. Um, you have an explosion range for when you deactivate Phoenix Blaze to do damage in a pretty big area. This gives, oh, it's, this is a percentage increase of fire. So you get another 60% fire on top of your current um, Railjack weapons damage. So that's pretty okay. Um, plus a speed increase for your Railjack. Damage reduction we don't really care about too much. But, oh, and the explosion damage of the Phoenix Blaze is not very... Uh, Oh, it accumulates damage every second and unleashes it on deactivation. Okay, so this will be like, I think at max was it like 120 explosion damage. So it'll be like 120 plus another 160 per second of you having this up. So, I mean, yeah, you, like after you have Phoenix Blaze up for a little while, you could have a decent sized explosion 
uh, to complement your otherwise um, increasing of your 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 weapon damage. That's a reasonable, but I think it sounds like a whole lot of work when you could just press three for seeker volley and shoot that into your tether and watch entire armies of enemy fighters explode without having to think about it. And you just, just press the press, you know, two, three, one and everything dies. So I think that's probably the way that you should still go. Um, but all I really want to hammer home with this section before I rattle on for too much longer is that I really don't think you should use Void Hole until DE implements some kind of system that causes the, um, uh, the, the cruise ships to not shake violently inside of the Void Hole. Because it just makes for a really bad experience. So if that were to ever come to pass, I could recommend Void Hole once again. But as long as Rail Shack... <laughs> sorry, as long as cruise ships uh, shake violently, can't recommend it. Finally, for your tactical... I don't think you have a whole lot of choices here, unfortunately. Um, so you have Breach Quanta, just to stall a whole Breach. So if you have, like, all four of your human players all off doing side missions and no one's on the Railjack, Breach Quanta on at least one of your players is very, very helpful. Just to give you all time to continue doing your solo side missions before you one of you returns to the Railjack to address the problem. So this is very, very helpful. Intruder Stasis I find to not be useful whatsoever simply because... The intruders, once they get on the ship, are simply going to cause a hull breach or cause a fire. That's what they're going to do, is either breach or fire, and that's all they're going to do. So, ultimately, just you can just use breach quanta, and you can still have the benefits of intruder stasis eff effectively. But if you're a very, very, very low-level player, like, say that you're a really low mastery rank, and you don't have great weapons, and you are leeching onto some other person's high-level railjack missions to like level yourself up and farm mods and whatever. Intruder Stasis would be very helpful for you as a low-level player with poor mods to basically say, okay, all the enemies are stuck for 30 seconds, and now I can take my time to kill them with my otherwise really crappy guns. That's reasonable. That's a use case. But for a high-level player, I don't think that that, you know, I don't, I don't think you're going to actually use this. Form up. Force all of your teammates to come back to the railjack. So if you if you got players that uh, you know they're just sitting out in space in their arc wing and they're not helping you, they're not doing anything useful, they're wasting your time, they're wasting a crew member slot. You would rather have an AI. You control them with the form up ability. Well, that's pretty cool. Definitely recommend that for sure. Offensive. We have two choices, Battle Stations or Death Blossom. I think if you do not have Rank 9 on your Gunnery Intrinsic, if you don't have that yet, which is Flush Heat Sinks, I think if you don't have that, you want Death Blossom. Remove cooldowns for 25 seconds, you're going to shoot for a really long time. Once you have that ability to basically flush your heat sinks and reload your railjack gun. This stops having a, a, a reason for existing and you instead want to have battle stations, which is going to give you 65% base turret damage for 26 seconds. So you basically what you do, like I said earlier, you pop this at the start of your railjack mission, right before you start shooting your main guns at uh, enemy targets. Uh, this will give you a decent total amount of base damage to start killing some of the easy opponents. Uh, and start stacking up Crimson Fugue, st or Crimson Fugue stats um, to keep your base damage acceptably high. So I think this is kind of non-negotiable once you've got that rank 9 gunnery. Finally, for your super, you actually have a couple of options. Could go Void Cloak. If you're playing by yourself a lot and you have the three AI teammates, Void Cloak is so incredibly helpful. Uh, because your AI teammates do literally nothing useful for you at all, ever. So, you might as well Void Cloak them and uh, give yourself another 35 seconds of breathing room. However, realistically, and we'll talk more about this later, um, the the only meta uh, of crew members at launch of Railjack Revised is to have three engineers. There, there's literally no reason to have a gunner. There's no reason to have a pilot. Uh, there's barely a reason to have a defender. Unless you just really like your Kuba Lich or something. Uh, so... You're going to have three engineers who are going to keep your ship going no matter what. So Void Cloak isn't necessarily super useful. 
and, I, and I'm kind of been lately convincing myself to use something else instead of it. But this is kind of a comfort pick because if I'm playing solo and I need to be shooting a whole bunch of crew ships with my forward artillery because my AI just don't do that, um, then what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to disable a couple of crew ships in close proximity by basically I, I'll strip their, their shields and then I'll shoot out their engines so they can't move and then I'll dash away uh, void cloak, s switch into my um, my forward artillery, and kill those uh, kill those uh, those big ships. So it's kind of helpful for that specifically. Battle forge, I find um, if you're a pilot, is like not needed. If you're going to be playing with a friend and you know that you're going to be doing kind of your split between engineering duties and uh, forward artillery duties, battle forge can be helpful. If you're in a pinch and you just really need to craft a whole bunch of crap really fast. Um, it's nice to have, but it's not like the, the primary thing that you want. But this is kind of the beauty of the Plexus system in that every person on your team can bring something different. And, and because everyone can bring something different, they can have a lot of only subtly or um, like sometimes useful abilities. Because between the four of you, someone's going to have the right ability for the job and you can coordinate and kind of use it. And I think that's part of the fun of Railjack. So I'm happy to report that at least a few of these supers are pretty good. Fire suppression is like fine. It's it's not it's, it's nothing flashy, but you know having one person on your team to have fire suppression um, to use maybe if you are if no one's on the railjack and no one can use their tactical uh, menu to remote repair it with level ten engineering, fire suppression is a nice backup just to you know put that out and deal with it. Flow burn, great for a pilot. Probably if I if I were playing with a, with a consistently good team of people that actually know how to play Railjack, I would use Flow Burn just for the movement speed, just to get from point A to point B faster and clear missions an extra ten seconds more quickly. <laughs> it's really like all it comes down to is just a, I can get a faster mission clear because I can uh, move around ships uh, like the big capital ships more quickly to shoot the security things or to get my um, my forward artillery person into um, into position to blow up whatever I'm aiming at like. I definitely can see some great arguments for Flow Burn as the pilot. But with that, uh, with all that, that's it for the um, the Railjack. That's it for the Plexus. Intrinsics, I mean, it's a, it's a big grind. I recommend Engineering 10 as the most important thing to remotely repair onboard hazards. It'll save you so much time and, uh, and trouble. You're also going to want Command Rank 6. Uh, so that way you have all three of your crew members and you have all your competency points to give them. But that's only if you are... Well, this is this is going to be going to apply to the vast majority of people because very few people are going to play Railjack in a party together with their friends and have competent people. So you're almost always going to have to rely on your AI in some capacity. So get all three of them and train them up all the way. I think uh, you want... You want you might even want that before you get... Um, before you get engineering. You might want Command 7 first. Or at least Command 6. And then just like go like one into everything else because it only costs like one intrinsic. So you get like everything to like level one or two. And like the first thing you try to go deep into, I think, is command six or command seven. After that, engineering 10. After that, it's kind of your choice on what you want to do and how you want to distribute stuff. I'll let you have your own brain and think on that yourself because this video is more than long enough already. Crewmates. I'm going to abstain from getting too upset with this section because the crewmates i think launched in an offensively bad way and i don't want to be like the super angry toxic gamer and de if someone from you guys is watching i'm sorry i don't mean to be rude but i, I just i think that this system as it has launched is really really terrible and here is um the most verbose and clear explanation i can give you as to why so crew members that you recruit from ticker will spawn in a ticker's store with either eight, nine, or 10 uh, attribute points at base. And they'll be randomly distributed and they'll have a total of either eight, nine, or 10, okay? That's fine, I guess. But the thing is, is that you don't have the ability, if, if say, say if you buy um, one of these crew members that cost, or that has eight attributes, there's no way to give them those two other attribute points that they're missing at baseline. It's not like you can use them in like 10 missions and they get another point or something and they level up. They just, 
They just don't get that in the current system. If, if they will in the future, then please let me know so, so like I can get on from this in my own head. But with the information I have available at my fingertips right now, um, you know, either... So as you level up in the tactical tree, or command tree, excuse me, you, you, you gain three competency points that you can assign to crew members, like three for each crew member, okay? So if you buy a crewmate that has eight attribute points, eight plus three is 11. If you buy one that has a base of 10, 10 plus three is 13. So there's no way to, to get your 11 point crew member to become a 13 point crew member, you know? Um, and it's not like the, the costs and the prices of these, um, of these crewmates really vary enough. Um, with how many base stats they have for you to really be like, okay, well, I'm going to get the frugal one because I can only afford the cheap one or you, or I'm Mr. Moneybag. So I'm going to get the one that's already completed and done and fully trained and I don't got to worry about it. You know, there, there's no, there's no gamut there for you to interact with as a, as a player. So basically if you buy a, a crew member that has less than 10 stats, you, you are literally just wasting your money and you might as well wait for one that has better stats from a purely min maxing standpoint. Now, I want to add this huge asterisk here because are you ever really going to notice how many attribute points your, uh, your, your dudes and your babes have? No, you're not. But it's just a, it's a purely philosophical thing, a purely just like min-maxing standpoint of like, come on, just, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to give me dudes and babes that spawn with eight as opposed to 10, give me some kind of way to train them up to 10 base attribute points separately from the three I get from my intrinsics. That would be fantastic. Second point of major grief is that the piloting AI is absurdly bad. Under no circumstance do you want one of your AI buddies to be piloting your railjack because even with max speed, they go very slow. Even with all five points invested, they have no brain. They they will not shoot heat sinks that come out of your away missions. So if you're playing solo, you have to go into the asteroid base, hack the panel to open up the radiator jack. You have to leave to shoot it yourself, just like you did before. Then go back in, repeat a second time, come out and shoot it, go back in a third time to complete the away mission. Like, the whole point of these AI is that it's supposed to help you to clear these missions and not have to do that anymore. So you can actually play solo if you want to or have to. But the piloting AI released in such a poor state and the gunnery AI as well, they both released in such a bad state as they are that it's just, it's it's not gonna happen. Like they're, they're not gonna help you. So with with this in mind, there is literally no reason for you to invest points and piloting or gunnery. So this goes back to our first point of buying dudes and babes from Ticker. You need to look for dudes and babes that have 10 base attributes and they have zero in piloting and they have zero in gunnery. It's really bad. That needs to be looked at. That needs to be made better. I'm sure DE eventually will, but in case someone from DE didn't realize already that it's really bad, I'm telling you now, it's really bad and you need to fix that uh, at your earliest convenience, please and thank you. Most important stats then, in my opinion, endurance and repair. If you can get lucky and you get all 10 of your points distributed between endurance and repair with like four in endurance, with a minimum of four in endurance and three in repair or vice versa, four in repair, three in endurance, then you're pretty much golden. Even if you get like an eight point roll, like a crappy dude or babe, but all eight of your points are in repair endurance, like you're, you're, you're in a good spot. Reason being is that no matter what you do, if you're playing on a mission with these AI teammates, your ship will be breached. It will catch on fire. It will be boarded repeatedly throughout the mission. Having teammates that don't die and don't require you to stop what you're doing to revive them is important because these AI are intended to save you time and grief and trouble. 
most important stat right here, endurance. Second most important stat is repair. If you are piloting your railjack and you suffer a breach, you want that fixed as quickly as possible. Not really much to argue here. However, if you do have all 10 points in engineering and you can remote repair, then you're going to remote repair stuff faster than even a fully ranked repair person can actually do it. So, I wouldn't fault you if you instead went for max endurance, max combat. And then you just simply assigned all three of your people to repair anyways. Because how the AI works right now is that if you set your AI to repair mode, they will wander the ship aimlessly until there is something to repair. And once there's something to repair, they will hold W towards the repair and try to repair it. This is useful because many of these issues on your ship are going to be caused by a boarding party getting on and causing the issue. So if they're on repair mode, they're going to walk into enemies and engage in combat with them, even if they are not set to defense mode or on the defense job or the combat job, whatever. So you want them to not die and you want them to be able to kill stuff. So endurance and combat and repair are your three most important stats with endurance being the most important. And then you repair and combat, I think you can split however you desire. Maybe you can have like one or two of your dudes and babes that are set to max repair and the others are set to max combat. That's fine. Just do me a favor and never willingly invest a point in either piloting or gunnery because it is literally a waste of your time. And that's my rant on that. And with that, we are all done with railjack equipment, AI, and all that good stuff. And we're 52 minutes in. This would not be a Frothy Omen video if it was not over an hour long of whatever the hell this is. <laughs> so, let me have a little sip of water. And let's get into Warframe setups and weapon setups. Because that is also very, very important to discuss. Most important Warframe for a pilot, in my opinion is Lavos, although Hildren also is like a good runner-up. So Lavos is interesting for this role, specifically because Railjacks no longer have Flux energy. Uh, you no longer craft Flux to power your abilities. Your Railjack simply runs off your Warframe energy to cast its abilities. Well, Lavos does not have energy. Lavos' abilities all work on a cooldown, thus... Railjack abilities now will work on a cooldown as long as Lavos is the one casting the ability. So that means that we can cast our tether munitions, not our, our tether seeker volley blackout pulse every couple of seconds and deal mega major damage plus CC to the entire map very frequently. No cost to us. Free real estate. On top of that, Lavos is also going to be casting his abilities from tactical at no energy cost. And it will not, it, I don't believe it will actually set the cooldown on, on Lavos's actual four because his catalyze is the ability that he casts. So you can catalyze the ship and it will not put your actual Lavos four on cooldown. Combine this with a teammate who has breach surge, for example or a teammate that has Larva, or a teammate that has pretty much any other offensive ability that can proc status effects. And all of a sudden, you're cooking with gas. You can clear a lot of boarding parties without ever leaving the driver's seat because Catalyze is so damn strong. Plus, you can cast not only this ability, but all of your teammates' abilities from Tactical at no energy cost because you're Lavos. It just puts them on a cooldown. Again, it's free real estate, man. It's really, really good. Lavos is so, so good in a Railjack application. 
as long as he's on the railjack. It doesn't need to be the pilot specifically, but Lavos plus the tactical menu in general is just very, very strong. In addition, you have Vile Rush, which is very helpful if you are doing the, um, the specific grind for the brand new Sentinel, which I will show you where you need to go for that. Uh, so we'll get back on the ship here. We'll go to navigation. Uh, this cinematic is so long. I apologize. I do not have a, um, like one of those mission fast travel thingamajigs in my dojo. So I have to go in here to look at navigation. But you'll go to Neptune Proxima and you'll go to New Gua Mines. And what you need to do is you need to do the side mission where you go into the ice base and you walk 500 to 1000 meters inside the ice base to press the button at the very end. Like, you just hack the panel, and then you get the, um, the unidentified reward. That will take you into Rotation B um, to potentially get the um, all four of the pieces for the brand new Sentinel. It's the, the Carapace, Cerebrum Systems, and Main Blueprint all will drop from this mission. Well, it'll drop from any mission that has that ice-based side mission, but this seems to be the mission where everyone is congregating to farm it. So this is where you want to go. And this is going to be an exterminate? Yeah, it's an exterminate mission with low-level enemies to boot. So that's really, really good. So you're doing an exterminate where you need to go fast. Got low-level enemies. Psh, you got Lavos. You could use Vile Rush to go fast, move through the level really, really quickly, and Catalyze to kill stuff. Cool. Awesome. Fun. Excellent. Very, very good Warframe for, for Railjack and for that farm specifically. A-plus rating. Pick them up. Use them. Other Warframes that can be um, very useful on Railjack. Uh, this is not a full list. You have you you are a human and you are willing to have your own opinions on this. Some other stuff that I have found useful would be Zaku. Less so than pretty much anything else I'm going to recommend. Zaku is kind of the bottom of the barrel for stuff I would recommend. But I think he's, he's on there well enough because he is very solid for both the Exterminate Railjack missions and he is just fine at doing volatile missions as well. Reason being is there's just a lot of enemies that will come from every direction in Volatile. So being able to disarm them and uh, just kind of give yourself a little bit more breathing room to uh, both fight, like, fight back and kill enemies passively while giving yourself extra survivability by hitting two and then hitting four, it's fine. Is it the most amazing thing in the world? No, but Zaku is like... They're, they're solid for this. I really find them to be A-OK. -okay. Like, they're, they're useful in, in every mission type. Like, they're good in, in, in um, Railjack defense as well. Because, again, a lot of these defense missions are just super low level. So you just AFK on top of the um, on top of the cryopod. You press 2 and you press 4. And you just let, let your floaty guns do literally all the work for you while you watch Netflix. So, like, I, I would always recommend... Zaku for um, for pretty much any content in Warframe that's not like really specific stuff like Eidolons or whatever, but just like for generalized content uh, that's not like Steel Path, I think Zaku is like a really slept on underrated pick for everything, and I still recommend him for Railjack missions too. He just works very, very well. Um, Saren Prime. Saren's good for also just like pretty much everything. You stick a uh, primed flow on Saren Prime, and you're looking at like 850 energy. Uh, so... She makes for a decent enough pilot if you don't want to use Lavos or something or, you know, you need to become a pilot because your Lavos is away or whatever the hell happens, you know. Saren Prime is decent because you can just drop an energy pad, have Primed Flow. You can even bring Preparation uh, if you want to, which is a mod that causes you to start with a percentage of your max energy already filled. And uh, she is a very acceptable Warframe to have for both piloting, for spamming the energy, as well as for clearing uh, exterminates decently quickly for clearing pretty much every other mission type in Railjack uh, efficiently and effectively. Like, if you're going to be doing, like, endless um, endless Railjack defense, Saren makes a lot of sense for that to help you clear the map. But uh, not, like, the best pick, not, like, the fastest killer, but just going to be consistent. Consistent mega damage and consistent map control. So that's pretty, pretty solid of a pick. Wisp. Probably, like, the best Warframe in the game in general. Just for, like, she she's good in Eidolons. She's good in Profit Taker. She's good in, in Exploiter. She's good in General Content. She's good in Arbitration. She's good in Steel Path. Like, you name a piece of content, and Wisp is probably a top five or top one pick in that piece of content. So, Railjack is no exception. 
fan freaking tastic especially because her breach surge is the ability from the tactical menu that everyone else is able to cast so having multiple like everyone on your team having access to breach surge without having to use helmets to get breach surge just <laughs> of course wisp would have that wisp has everything like why not why not let her have that in addition to all of her other assets next up ember weird pick i know but again if you're doing this uh this same grinding mission i was just talking about for getting the brand new sentinel that is that is locked into this new railjack setup um ember is just going to one shot all the corpus enemies and let you really really easily um just mash four through the whole mission and clear the extermination part very very quickly you can put something like um like the helminth speed ability or um some other speed focused ability like molt or whatever on ember to move through the exterminates even faster should you so choose that's a really useful one to have um gara i mean i guess if you really wanted to bring her for defense you could that's fine gauss if you want to get through exterminates really quickly you could Cora, if you want to afk farm railjack defense sure go for it makes a lot of sense hard to blame you for that uh what else neja if you want to get through the exterminates quickly good enough neja is fine protea you can drop your um your three which is the dispenser and then you can go into tactical and drop another dispenser <laughs> so you can have two dispensers sitting right behind your pilot at all times or you can be the pilot as protea and that's pretty cool but if you're going to be the pilot, I still think you should just play Lavos because it's just like no brain, uh, infinite energy, spam your abilities really fast and just murderize stuff with the Railjack. But I mean, hey, if you if you want to be the pilot with Protea and then have like bring her into the actual mission type that's more of like a longer endless kind of thing, which is, again, just Railjack defense, then hey, I mean, she is a valid pick. Titania, get through both the exterminate missions and the uh, the side quest missions like to... You know, go into the ice base or whatever the hell else you have to do for the side missions. You know, she can press her four and get through all that really quickly and efficiently. So, would not blame you or fault you for bringing a Titania. Volt, best boy. Good at nuking, good at speed, good energy pool. Just, he's got all the right things he needs for to be both a Railjack pilot and a Railjack side mission doer and a Railjack main mission doer and an, and an endless Railjack mission doer. Just great Warframe for all that stuff. Would really recommend Volt. Wukong, solid enough. Really, really good for Railjack just because you can summon your Celestial Twin ally and then go into Tactical and spawn another Celestial Twin, which, by the way, you can do in the actual mission type as well. So you get into like the capital ship where you have to do your real mission and you'll have not one but two uh, Wukong buddies with you. So that's pretty pog. <laughs> uh, that's, that's really cool, just having two... Um, two specters for free not having to actually toss a specter and then you could toss a specter as well and just have an, like an, an entire full team of ai doing the the endless defense for you while you just afk and watch netflix and tab in every now and then to not get the afk timer levied against you <laughs> so yeah wukong is really uh really really solid for that role as well finally for weapons I think you can use literally anything that you like. The enemies are low enough level that whatever you think is going to be useful for you uh, will do probably just fine. The one major recommendation I would make, though, is the Zenith. Reason being is that it has infinite punch through when you use the select fire mode or the secondary fire mode. And it is so, so helpful, specifically in volatile missions, because... In the volatile missions, you have enemies streaming in from four different areas, plus you need to be looking at the marked uh, tech enemies who are going to hack the panel and ruin your mission for you, and you got to deal with them, uh, and your attention is going to be split between multiple, multiple different areas, and then you also have to watch the heat meter on the left side and shoot out the heat pipes uh, at, at the very specific moments to make sure you're not wasting time by being overheated. So having the Zenith equipped and preset into the secondary fire mode for infinite wall bang, infinite wall banging, infinite punch through, um, is just so helpful because you can, it's just one less thing to focus on where if you realize, oh crap, I need to shoot a heat pipe, you can just pull your Zenith out and just wall bang it really quickly and not have to worry about like moving around the room and getting in position to see it from the right angle. Cause like they can be finicky with the angles you can see them from yada, yada, yada. Like it's just one less thing for you to worry about. 
and it's very very helpful in that role so zenith is definitely a um a big recommendation from me especially if you combine it with um on your pet you have the um synth mods so you have at least you if you bring synth fiber or some other synth mod in your set then your um your weapon is going to be reloaded uh, passively on your back so that way you never have to worry about reloading your zenith because when you reload the zenith you toggle it out of its primary fire or you toggle it out of secondary fire back into primary fire which does not have punch through and then you'll, you'll need to go through the whole animation of putting it back into secondary mode again which is a pain in the butt and a waste of time so having one of those set mods somewhere else on your on your setup is going to be very helpful to keep your zenith always topped out on bullets and you don't have to play the reloading and changing firing modes game you just do it once and it's done for the rest of the mission so that's very very helpful um mod setup for it you do whatever the hell you want but realistically speaking this is just like a base damage multi-shot uh viral heat crit you know just like it's how you build literally every weapon there's nothing special about this it's just a very very typical kind of uh, kind of build Anything else I can think of before I let you go? I don't think so. I mean, I guess like for like one other thing for the Zenith that is useful is that uh, not for the volatile missions necessarily, but for some of the side missions and the Corpus um, Veil Railjack missions, you will need to go into a side mission where basically you hack a panel and then Cephalon Psy will start doing uh, a hack. And enemies will spawn in occasionally that are like jammers and they will jam the hack. And they'll spawn in multiple rooms away from you. So being able to wall bang those enemies with the Zenith will save you just a little bit of time as well and let you get through the hack just a few seconds more quickly in some situations uh, and thus complete the mission just a few seconds more quickly, which if you are grinding for some kind of Railjack reward, a couple of seconds times 50 runs saves you like a few minutes of your life, which you're never going to get back and you might as well try to get it back. Anyways, everyone... I think that mostly does it. If you have other Warframes that you would suggest, or Railjack weapons, or loadouts, or anything that we covered here that you think are useful that I did not talk about, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, because I am only one brain. This has only been out for a couple of days, this update I mean, so I can't have possibly seen and done everything yet. So please, help me learn and become better. Help your fellow gamer game harder. And I will see you all again sometime soon, I hope. Take care.